Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm April Rashad. In case some of you don't know who I am, I have a background in head injury rehab, personal training, nutritional consultant, and um, or consulting. And I just want you to know, um, you know, I teach. I, I meet with people one on one. I do teach weight loss classes. I teach general health. I help people with health challenges. Um, but I really take a customized approach and um, I really combine a lot of the tenets of a program called TLS Weight Loss Solution along with lifestyles of people from the blue zones and the nutritarian lifestyle. So you're going to kind of get a little bit of everything today. And this is just a really fast wellness 101. I can't address everything in what I have for slides. So I'm just going to kind of give you a big, broad overview overview and I'll stay at the end to answer questions either by unmuting people or allowing you to you know type things in the chat which I can't look at while I'm doing this but certainly at the end I'll take a quick look um, so I always like to start by asking people you know if there was one thing about your health um, that you wanted to change what would it be and if you look at zero on here as sort of the absence of symptoms you know the absence of symptoms doesn't mean that we're well right and but everybody always has a place like even if you're in good health or you are fit there's always areas that might be challenging whether it be migraine headaches or you know you want to just lose an extra 10 pounds or whatever and then there's other people that really have multiple health challenges and mystery illnesses and different things that are going on you you could just take a list, take a look at this list right here and um, see that these are just a couple of the things that I really get. Um, I have people, you know, always wanting to address when I meet with them. Um, anything from headaches and joint pain and chronic pain to anxiety and GI issues, you know, IBS, Crohn's, things like that. Sleep issues is a big one. Um, weight concerns, energy deficits, people who are just getting constantly sick and slow to heal. So you can take a look at that list and you know that there's more than just that. But the thing is, is that food and what we put in our body is ultimately the key. And so you have to think about your car, like your body, like it's a car, you know, and like, what are you fueling it? You would never think to go buy a new car and put sugar water in the tank. You know that it runs on a certain thing. And even though we have so much access to food, good food, bad food, and everything in between, um, there's a few tenants that even though we take a customized approach, we could probably agree fruits, vegetables, right? Hydration, certain things are, are, should be basic foundations for the way people are fueling their bodies. And so I want you to think about that as you sort of move forward and think about food. I love this quote. It wasn't originally from um, Mark Hyman. I think it was Ann Wigmore, but it, you know, he says it, food can either be the best form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. Isn't that true? And it's something where it's not like with alcoholics or with drug addicts where you can just abstain. You have to eat every single day. You have to fuel your body every single day. Um, and our body will still work right? Even if we're not feeding it the right things, but over the course of time, what you're putting in your body can act like medicine or can act like poison slowly. So think about that and think about the fact that you really do have ultimately control um, over your health, which should feel empowering, especially now in today's day and age where people feel like so much is out of their control. There's so much that you can do to support your body for longevity, for optimal health, for prevention of cold flu viruses, things like that, and um, really put yourself in a great position. So, you know, four out of the five top killers still in this country are preventable disease. Um, I don't know if people realize that, you know, not only, I mean, we know a third of Americans are getting their food from fast food and maybe I'm preaching, you know, to the choir with healthier eaters on this wellness 101, but just be aware of that. Like eating healthy is still not something that people are learning in schools. They're not learning it growing up. A lot of us as adults had to unlearn, right? Or, or learn for the first time, what are the right things that we should be doing really for our health? And of course there's still debate and there's fad diets and there's something new that's going to pop up all the time, but there's certain things that have been true for forever, right? So um, anyway, take a look at these statistics. 215,000 people under the age of 20 and 79 million people over the age of 20 have diabetes today. And still one in three people is going to get diagnosed with cancer. One in four are going to die from heart disease. And 50% of deaths are still, one out of every two people are still dying of a stroke and a heart disease. You know, some, some combination of one of the other. So it's an issue, you guys. And there's so much that we can do to be proactive. Now we have this, you know, COVID-19 and other viruses and 
listen, it's not new things are sort of cyclical. So even though um, COVID, which is a form of SARS, is not new in and of itself, there's other forms of it. This is just a variation of mutation. And you're going to see something like this happen again. So keeping your body healthy, supporting your body's natural defense systems and your immune systems is really vital. It's just the easiest, best way to give your body its best shot. Not that you'll never, ever get sick, but that if you do end up getting any kind of cold flu virus or condition that your body can bounce back and be in a better position. So, you know, some of the problem of what's been happening starts really ultimately with food. It started with really bad food pyramids where breads and cereals were the thing that we were supposed to be eating six or more servings. Think about that right now. If you ate six or more like muffin cereals and like toast today, would you not have like a pregnant belly or feel like you needed to fall asleep by 12 o'clock? Of course you would. And then we make we make changes, like in the Obama administration, it was like the my plate, right? But look at this. Do we really need to be having grains, dairy, protein of, from an animal source, fruits and vegetables like this at every meal? No, that's not the right way to do it either. It's a step in the right direction, sort of, but it's really not where optimal health is coming from. So you have to understand that there's archaic ideas out there of what we're still teaching our kids, what people are still growing up on. And now to add to that, we have all these fad diets, keto and this and that. And listen, long term, there's a lot of ways you can lose weight. There's a lot of ways you can achieve, you know, certain like short term goals. But long term, ketogenic lifestyle is not healthy. You know, it is really not healthy. Um, and there's plenty of science behind the fact that that much fat and that much animal protein will affect your insulin resistance, will affect um, you from the standpoint of earlier death or increased risk of cancer and heart disease. It's just the science has been there for years and years and years and years. People just sort of kind of turn a blind eye. And then you have this other problem where people think that they know what they're eating, but they're not because we're so marketed to on TV, right? This is just this left and right, by the way. And listen, I'm sure none of you ever eat a McDonald's nugget, right? I mean, <laughs> but I'm sure you all have, and I'm sure somebody's kid is going through the drive through I do not feed my kids McDonald's ever, 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 but I know I have an 18, a 15, and a 13-year-old, and I know that they happen through there as much as they happen through a Dunkin' Donuts drive through or whatever that you can't control, but education is the key. That on the left, that pink slime, which is like a whole bunch of chicken that's all mixed together and then they add ammonia to try to like get rid of some of the you know bacteria and stuff is literally what is coated and deep fried to make a nugget that's why your chicken nuggets at home don't look like that and don't taste anything like that um like they do in mcdonald's so i think that's part of it we get desensitized and then there's food fraud all over the place right like most olive oil that's on your shelf today isn't even olive oil. It's just like there was a suggestion that there was an olive in the room when it was, you know, manufactured and brought here or whatever. There's tons of research on this, but it's, it's combinations of really bad plant oils and things like that. Um, so, so there's just a lot that's combating us. And I think that that's really what I'm trying to get at. In addition to the fact that we have over time really caused this like build up of toxin and really slow down our liver. A lot of people have a sluggish liver. I was just talking to a bunch of um, clients that I have on a Facebook group recently about like, who are the people that wake up at 3 a.m. and they don't know why, and they can't go back to sleep or they're sweating at three, four o'clock in the morning, right? And a lot of times that's like one of the first things that people notice um, if their liver is sluggish because your body is trying to head into a detox mode around 4 a.m. to about 12 noon. And when, their, body, when it, their liver is heating up, if it can't really function the way it's supposed to, it often will wake you up or it will make you sweat or things like that. But there's other issues here at stake. There's chemicals, right? Herbicides and pesticides you're consuming consuming like 15 pounds a year, antibacterial soaps that have chemicals in it, toxins and perfumes and environmental things and plastics that are all bombarding your body. Heavy metals that not just from us, not just from a tuna you might have eaten, but this could be passed down genetically, generation to generation. You've got processed foods and sugars that even if you've decided to eliminate them now, think about how many years you might have you know, been drinking soda or eating bad foods before you knew better right? Then you've got over-the-counter medications, regular prescribed medications, alcohol. We're not hydrating enough. We've got thicker blood because of it. We're not, you know, allowing our body the hydration it needs to be able to rid it of toxins. And we've got a lack of nutrients in our food naturally, even if you're trying to eat healthy, um, a lack of exercise, a lack of sleep. We have stress. I mean, all of this stuff, you guys, that's combating you. So it's more important now than ever to be able to manage all of this, right? Top that off with the fact that so much of what we have done 
has killed off good bacteria in our gut. You're supposed to have like a balance, 85% good bacteria that's in your favor versus bad bacteria at about 15%. But for a lot of people, it's like 40, 60% and it's not good. And so that's where all of a sudden you've got a sluggish liver that can't really get rid of things and can't function properly and things just keep recycling through your body. And then you've got your stomach, which is getting bombarded with bacteria that can't handle it because it doesn't have the raw ingredients there to be able to help you. And you notice this as all those little one-off symptoms and illnesses and issues and unexplained weight gain or acne or eczema or whatever it is that might be, you know, plaguing you or people that you know. So, you know, these are just all more things to consider, right? There's so much stuff that's combating us of what's killing good bugs, what's sl slowing down our liver. So I wanted to just give you a little bit of background, but where do you start is probably the most important question that you can ask yourself. And so I always, when I'm working with people or even for myself, it's about healing the gut first and it's about covering deficiencies. I always recommend people do whatever feels like they can manage. Like something simple, a three to seven day cleanse is really a great way to kickstart. So really just like to change your mindset, not that you're going to change the world in that amount of days. But I mean, if you feel stomach bloating or you feel like you're foggy or you have headaches or you're not sleeping well, three to seven days of just really stripping down the foods that you're eating, providing some good nutrients from food and supplement can really make a big difference because your GI tract is linked to all of the, you know, it's really the source of your immune system. And plus, um, when I've got people who are experiencing anxiety or depression, understand that 95 or so percent of your serotonin, that feel-good neurotransmitter, is both created and housed in your gut, okay? If your gut is all gummed up, that's probably also one of the reasons why you may have cravings for certain kinds of foods or deficiencies because even when you're eating food, it's not absorbing properly. And so your body gets hungry for anything because it's continually looking for the right kinds of nutrients, right? Your skin health is just a very good picture of what's going on in your gut, your propensity for disease, all of it. So I usually um, recommend people do, we just did um, with a group of mine, we just did a three-day cleanse, something really simple. It was right before Memorial Day. And wow, what a big difference it made for a lot of people who just spent three days really focused on fruits and vegetables and um, took a few supplements or whatever that might help their body to like, you know, expel some of the toxins, support their liver, support antioxidant protection, you know, put back some good bacteria, things like that. There's a few suggestions I typically have, like if you want to do a seven-day cleanse, um, that NutraClean seven-day kit is what you're seeing on the left side right here. It has like exactly seven days of what you might need between a very high-quality fiber powder with pre and probiotics, and it's got release tablets to help to release things from your system, but also has one of my favorite products, this one that's in the middle right here called Hepaticlens, that for daily support of your liver and that sluggish liver is so amazing. This complete detox kit on the right hand side includes that hepatic cleanse, but also has something called curcumin, which people are familiar with turmeric familiar, and also some antioxidant liver protection from this thing called oxygen extreme. So that's more like 30 days on a cellular detoxification level, both really benign, both really easy to um, take and follow. And of course, putting back good bacteria. I like this probiotics 10 and um, any of the flavors of aloe juice because this particular company has 150 proof of aloe. So it's a very high quality. It doesn't have aloe in, which has that laxative property. They ex ex extract that, but they leave all the good nutrients in it. And it's a hundred percent whole leaf process. So, you know, if you go to GNC or down the street, you may find aloe, but it's 80% water. It's not a whole leaf process and it really can be very disturbing to your GI tract. So a lot of the manufacturers that I work with, I really enjoy these products because I vetted them. I know what the ingredients are. I know what the quality is and that type of thing. And I'm sure if you got this link from somebody you know, else other than me, um, they may have access to the same manufacturers. I work with health coaches and TLS coaches all around the country. Um, for cleansing foods, if you were going to do a quick cleanse, there is a TLS seven-day detox that has a great menu plan. We just did a three-day cleanse that was mostly just fruits and vegetables and lots of, um, uh, and really th that was basically it because it was just for three days and we just did that plus supplements and hydration and things of that nature. So there's a lot of different ways that you can spin it. And once you get through a three or a seven-day cleanse, really it's about ongoing, what are you putting in your body? Clean food 
being at the primary, right? So I just wanted to kind of define that and sort of give you the idea that I teach all my clients, which is the idea of home. It doesn't mean you can never have a glass of wine again. It doesn't mean you can never have a dessert again. It doesn't mean it has to be one or the other. But I really feel like until people are getting um, close to their goals, that you should have something that's a home base. You should know what your meal plan would consist of to help you to achieve your goals. So I know what it is for me and I'll outline it in just a moment, but then you visit places, right? On the weekends, you visit places for vacation. That's how you can kind of think of how you go off of your meal plan, but what are you doing 80 to 90% of the time um, should feel like home to you. And um, anyway, so at the base of a good clean diet, right? And I'm not saying that you should be dieting like you go on and off of it, but like what your meal consists of is about, you know, alkalizing your body and starting with veggies as the focus. It should always be that way. Okay. Veggies should always be the, the mainstay, no matter how you eat, no matter whether you eat animal protein or you don't, no matter whether you're vegetarian or not. I know a lot of bad vegetarians that eat a lot of bagels and processed foods, right? So vegetables are always supposed to be the basis of anything you're eating and greens are at the top of that list. In addition to that, if you want to support immunity and overall health, you want to be adding in onions, mushrooms, and garlics on top of your greens. Like those four things are ultimately mandatory. They should be in there somewhere in your diet because they're the best at supporting anti-cancer uh, or they have anti-cancer properties. They're the best at supporting your immune system and um, lowering inflammation and things of that nature. And then it's about not having fruit fear, right? Like I feel like people have massive fruit fear today. The reality is, is that if you were eating more fruits instead of picking up you know, a burger or chips or popcorn or something like that, you'd be fine. There's no you know, section of the hospital that is set up for people who ate too many fruits. Like it just doesn't happen, right? So two to four fruits a day. And this is just like in general, this is just how I eat, but berries, apples, pears, grapefruit, papaya, nothing's off limits, but I try to stay with the ones that are like the heaviest in antioxidant protection and the ones that I both enjoy that maybe they're seasonal or whatever, but um, you can also get them frozen for smoothies, things of that nature. Um, one to two good fats. And keep in mind, you guys, that just as I said that your liver can be sluggish, you want to really like minimize fats before noon and let your body finish that process of detoxification without adding something that's going to sort of add insult to injury. And you really want to have your fats coming from nuts, seeds, and avocado instead of oil. So it doesn't mean I'm Italian. It doesn't mean I don't have extra virgin olive oil in the house of high quality. I do, but I really am mostly using it with a sprayer. I make a lot of salad dressings that don't have oil in them that maybe use avocado and some water or lime or honey or other things like that. And I still eat low glycemic, which is really about keeping your insulin and your blood sugar sort of on a level basis. So I don't eat things in larger quantities that are going to be very high glycemic, but it doesn't mean that they're not in my diet at all. So if you look at like having a serving of starchy veggies every day, like sweet potato or spaghetti squash or peas, but regular potatoes are higher glycemic, but it doesn't mean you can't have them. It just means maybe let's not have, you know, two big full baked potatoes every day. You know, you can slice them. There's a lot of different ways that you can eat those. Um, and then maybe a serving of beans or legumes, something like chickpeas or hummus or black beans or edamame that's uh, non-GMO and organic. And then if you're somebody who's not sensitive to grains and you can add those in, that's fine on occasion too. I say zero to one servings because for me, eating grains every day isn't really optimal. But if I'm having something like a scoop of brown rice like I did last night, or if you're going to have some whole grain oats on occasion or quinoa, if it works for you or whatever, gluten-free and whole grain would really be preferred. Um, dairy is something that I would suggest that people eliminate from their diet altogether. And then animal protein is really one of those things that I support people, whether they eat it or don't eat it. I've been sort of veering away from that um, just because of the high percentage of um, you know, cancer and things like that if you're eating higher quantities of animal protein. So in my house, we still eat it. We just eat less of it um, overall as we start to make that transition. And then the third thing, and of course, I'm not covering on this wellness 101 sleep and stress and hydration. I feel like those are so important. 
but um, just in terms of basic things, in terms of foods and supplements that you, in ways that you can get started, supplementing with high quality supplements is really vital, you guys. And a lot of it is because you just can't get everything from your food today. And, um, and so for me, it's just a non-negotiating factor. It's part of my food budget um, to make sure that I'm adding in the nutrients I can't get in my salad. I loved this quote from Dr. Mark Hyman on supplements. He says, maybe if we eat wild, fresh, organic, local, non-genetically modified food grown in virgin mineral and nutrient-rich soils that have not been transported across vast distances and stored for months before being eaten, and we work and live outside, breathe only fresh, unpolluted air, drink only pure, clean water, sleep nine hours a night, move our bodies every day, and are free from chronic stressors and exposure to environmental toxins, then perhaps we might not need supplements. And so how many people would actually fall under that category, right? So I feel like it's a necessity because just no matter how many salads and vegetables you eat, and probably nobody here could say, oh yeah, I definitely eat three to four fruits and eight to 12 servings of veggies a day. Like who does that, right? Every single day there's gaps in your diet and there's stressors and there's toxins and there's buildup over the years. So supplements can be a great way to enhance whatever your journey is to weight loss or to optimal health or to handling some, you know, some conditions that you have in a more natural way. I start by covering deficiencies through food and supplementation and then I really make sure that I take a customized approach and I always make sure that what I'm taking is quality and that's what I recommend to my clients. And it's sort of that idea of pay now or pay, pay later, right? Like if you're not buying as much processed food and animal protein type food, I can guarantee you you'll find money in your budget for more vegetables, fruits, and supplements. Like it, there's definitely a way to do that. I've done the math and I can see it. I can see how when you make that shift and you're not just all of a sudden buying supplements and vegetables on top of all the other stuff, that you were eating before, it definitely will come out even and sometimes even less expensive. But you have to watch for quality. Here's the Flintstones vitamin. I mean, you can put the Centrum, the whatever. Look at what's in here. Aspartame. Aspartame is in here. Red, number 40, Aluminum Lake. Yellow, number six, Aluminum Lake. Like, look at all this talc. There's so many nasty types of chemicals in so many things that are branded today to help us feel like we're doing something positive for our body. Every time you turn around, there's going to be a new gummy, right? That's out because we're too, what? We, we can't make a salad. We can't take a pill. We can't drink something that's going to be good for us that doesn't have all of those nasty chemicals in it. It's crazy. And so um, Isotonics is one of the brands that I like to work with. And here's why. This is a regular Centrum Silver four days in a digestive tract. You can see this in, all right? And this is the massive problem with well branded commercially commercially you know um, manufactured pills now today versus when this was taken there's certainly been improvements in how things are manufactured so i can't even say that the centrum silver today would do exactly this but the bottom line is is that there are binders fillers coatings disintegrators and other kinds of nasty ingredient ingredients in many products not all products and nothing not it's not like everything that's a pill is bad for you some things have to be in a pill or a capsule form but all i'm saying is that technology um, matters in terms of how things are manufactured. So you should just be cautious to make sure what you're taking is clean. I like to work with this Isotonics family of products because they are clean. They don't have any of those issues. They start as powders and then they are um, have a specific amount of water added to them to make them isotonic capable. And what that really means is it's like your blood, sweat, or tears. So these are highly absorbable, like a high percentage of them are available for your body to absorb. Obviously everybody absorbs at a, at a different level and, but they're recognized like blood, sweat, or tears in your body. And they're very gentle um, on the digestive system because your stomach sees it as like, oh my gosh, these are already digested. I don't need to dump more hydrochloric acid in there. You know what I mean? To be able to break it down. I don't need to dilute the nutritive factor of whatever it is that you're taking, which does happen traditionally with um, a lot of brand, well, branded things that are, you know, very available on the market today. So you can see in that family, there's many things to take. That's why I'm saying like, I usually take a very customized approach for both myself, everybody in my family, all of my clients or whatever, but there's certain things that we could probably agree on. And if you know me at all, you know that vitamin D is really high up there on the list for me. It is one of the most crucial 
nutrients. It's called a vitamin. It's more like a hormone, but it is the most crucial for your health. And the reason for that is because literally every cell in your body has a vitamin D receptor and yet a huge percentage of people globally are deficient. Okay. Now, are you deficient? I don't know. If you get your numbers tested, which you very readily can ask for when you go for your physical or there's ways, um, like I can have my clients um, get vitamin D tested, you know, on their own and without having to go back to their doctor if they didn't have it done. But there's going to be a number. If you're under 30, that's where it's going to get red flagged like, oh, you're deficient. And then over 30, it won't say you're deficient, but it does not mean that you're optimal. It just means that you're adequate. So it takes very little vitamin D to like prevent scurvy. Okay. But it's higher levels, optimal levels, somewhere between 55 and 85. Okay. Where you can avoid autoimmune conditions better, where you can avoid up to 16 kinds of cancers, where your bone health and your joint health and your cognitive health are going to be in a better position because your levels are more optimal. And like I said, we've got 50 to 75% of people globally who are deficient, up to 90% of people in the Northeast. And by the way, all you sunny Florida people, you too, just because you're in a sunny area does not mean that your vitamin D is at an adequate level or even an optimal level. Um, and you have to be outside 42% of your body exposed every single day um, to the sun, right? Without sunscreens and stuff, which can be dangerous in some cases, just to even get the amount so that your body will produce the vitamin D. So it's really usually better that people take this in supplement form and look at all the things that it can be linked to. The cold, flu, respiratory infection, fatigue, depression, anxiety, these are the things I see the most with clients when they take it. Anecdotally, I'm telling you, fatigue, it's like one of those things where like the fog gets lifted and people are like, holy cow, I have so much energy. Um, for us and my family personally, we don't get flu shots every year. We take higher levels of D&C and OPC3, all isotonic um, formulation. So um, like I said, every cell in your body has a vitamin D receptor. It is involved in over 2,000 expressions, um, gene expressions, including that of the immune system. You need it to create antibodies, and it really does enhance T-cell production. You can add to that um, vitamin C, which is very inexpensive and really also will enhance um, natural killer cell activity. So to me, that's like a very inexpensive one-two punch for people to make sure they're getting something that's very important, especially at this time with so much going on with the pandemic and even stress being able to suppress your immune system. Why wouldn't you want to do something to cover a deficiency and just enhance your body's natural defense systems just as added protection? I cannot tell you that I'm not making medical claims. I'm not saying you can watch and, and see where studies go, but it has been long proven that vitamin D and vitamin C are immune supportive um, right there. Another really important nutrient is magnesium. So high a percentage of people are deficient in magnesium as well. And I bolded the, the things that magnesium is really the best for. So like headaches, that's a really big one. The muscle cramping and muscle pain and muscle recovery, um, blood sugar levels, sleep, taking two caps of this before bed with four ounces of water really can help with that. But blood pressure, cardiovascular health, cognitive health, bone health. So really important nutrients. And like I said, cover your deficiencies first, cleanse your body, give your body a clean slate, and then at least take some of those basic nutrients you may be deficient in. And then every three to six months, you can kind of customize and decide what it is you need. Sometimes there's basic things like this complete greens where you can at least cover some gaps, right? Fill in the gaps within your diet. There's eight power greens right there in this product that I can guarantee you're not getting in your salad today. You're not getting spirulina. You're not getting barley grass. You're not getting cabbage powder. And so when you get these types of things, that's really so alkalizing to your system, really can help you to enhance you know, energy and immune support and give you B vitamins and iron and all sorts of things that are just really great, as well as giving your body all those nutrients it needs to give you know, like daily detoxification and support to your digestive tract. Now, obviously there's other ways that isotonics come where you can get sort of foundational nutrition. So you can talk to people about that. But the idea is, is that you do something positive for your health. 
well. Something where you can maybe cleanse, you can start to add all those really great foods in and you can do sus something systematically to be able to support ongoing health by adding in you know, nutrients through supplementation to like fill in the gaps and stuff like that. So I'm gonna, I promised myself I would keep it to 30 minutes. I'm so proud of myself, that was 29. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna see if there's any question and answer on the chat. So if you have an opportunity to be able to um, post things there, hold on, I'm just having a hard time getting that. Um, let me see, I'm just gonna go to the chat screen. Okay, but are there any questions? If you do, if you can post them there, otherwise I can um, see about unmuting people and seeing if they have any questions. And it can be on anything. It doesn't have to be on what I specifically talked about, but I can only unmute you guys like one at a time. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Is hepaticlin something you would take just for detoxing or would you take it on a more ongoing basis? That's a great question. So um, the, um, so the hepaticlin is something you can take every single month on a daily basis. Typically it's two capsules. You take it at night. It really will help with that overnight detoxification process. And it's mild enough that they offer it like that. Same with, so remember how I talked about that seven day cleansing kit and it had three things in it, a fiber powder, seven days of hepaticlin and seven days of a release tablet. The fiber powder and the hepaticlin, those are things you could take every day ongoing if you wanted for just daily support. Whereas the release tablets are really just for that seven day cleanse, which you could do you know, two to four times a year. Um, but you wouldn't take those on an ongoing basis. So I do love the hepaticlin and I do take it um, on an everyday basis. Yes, that's a great question. Anybody else have any questions before we wrap up? Awesome. I don't see anything else coming through. Um, hopefully this has been recorded. And if so, I will post it exactly where I posted the link for that. Um, oh, wait, I think I might have some more questions here. Let's just see. Nope. For some reason, I can't click on this, but that's okay. All right. So if anybody has any questions that I did not um, answer already, that you can certainly um, let me know or the person who gave you this link, but I hope everybody has a great day. And this is just one in a bunch of series. So if there are topics that you want to learn about, um, products you want to learn about, just hacks or tips or whatever, just make sure you let somebody know and we'll address it from there. Have a great day, everybody.